Is there is there sort of good evidence or obvious evidence or a lot of evidence at, that there's a brain level distinction between what we call conscious thought and what we call unconscious thought? There better be, but we don't know what it is. Well, uh, what do you mean by yeah. brain level? And maybe we better get yeah. that one yeah. out first. Well, I mean, we're it's an anatomical question. Is that what you're after? Yeah. I, well, I, I guess what I'm saying, this is the naive undergraduate question, right? So uh -huh. we're talking about two different types of cognition, okay? Conscious and unconscious, just to put the labels on it. So I'm just asking, how clear is it whether a certain act of cognition is conscious or unconscious? For example, can we point to something happening in the brain that we go, oh yes, look, there's a little conscious thought mm -hmm. traveling through. <laughs> Not quite like that, but, but there are plenty of signs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, yeah. so it's conceivable that, that we could It's a research problem. I just asked that to uh, yeah. Robert Shulman, a uh, 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 neuroscientist at Yale, and he said, um, yeah, first of all, you have to have a clear behavioral distinction. He said it's very, very easy. The kind of thing an anesthesiologist will test for, you know, are you conscious or not? It's really important you'd be able to tell. And that what it depends on is overall neuronal activity. There's a certain threshold of overall neuronal activity. There's no part of the brain that's associated with it. It's a global phenomenon. Well, that, that makes perfect sense for me, that, but that doesn't exclude the idea that it would be distinguishable at the brain level, even if it's not localized in a part of the brain. Right? Yeah, it could be, but he said there's no evidence yet sure. of okay. that sort of thing. All right. And there do seem to be some parts of the brain where, which, which is like systematically inaccessible to conscious. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so, so basically, midbrain, brainstem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's clear, clearly, serious cerebral cortical damage, thalamic damage, um, can really, you know, knock it out. It's gone. Yeah. Um, so that, so we know yeah. that that it's not everywhere in an equal sense. Um, yeah. Sure. That there are some strange and <coughs> enticing findings. Uh, I don't know how they're standing up which show that on some tasks which are clearly cognitive and they are, have nothing to do with motor behavior, you get this action in the cerebellum for mm -hmm. novelty. And that's a, what that means is, is what, as far as I know, wide open for speculative theorizing. It's an interesting fact that the part of your brain which tradition or you know, good scientific tradition says is primarily involved in motor control, balance, graceful behavior and so forth. Public coordination, yeah. Yeah, that that part of the brain should also be used for coping with novel problems and difficult cognitive problems. That's a really interesting fact. Mm -hmm. How many of you have the experience of uh, thinking you understand something until you actually say it out loud oh, yeah. and have yeah. it come in your ears. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, or reading or reading a paper out loud clearly can have a really enhancing effect. And I don't think there's any mystery about why that should be so. You're simply uh, getting other agencies in your brain to, to have a look at this material and give it, giving them a chance to, uh, to do whatever they do. So you're, you're feeding pattern into pattern recognizers and the the way I put it with my students I say making your you know paying yourself for making yourself lunch is clearly futile <laughs> trying to bluff yourself in 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 a solitaire poker is clearly futile <laughs> why should talking to yourself you already know what you're going to say, don't you? Why should that be not futile? And the answer, I think, has to be yourself is actually somewhat divided. And you're getting one part of you to have a conversation with another part of you, hoping that the other part maybe will be able to give you some help, give, give the first part some help. And, and it does seem to work. 